and welcome to Headshot Hollow. Uh, today I'm going to do a video tutorial using the new Love You Lots uh, set of stamps. It's a hostess set, so you can do it if you win the monthly shopping spree with me. You can get it if you host a party, either a virtual one or one in your home or at mine. And there's lots of different ways to get this, but it's only available um, through the hostess credits on an order. However, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I've done this You're Always There For Me card. Now I love this little hedgehog with the mouse and if I just grab the box again so you get the frog, you've got the two ladybugs and you've got the hedgehog. So you'll be seeing lots of the hedgehogs of course here at uh, Hedgehog Hollow. Uh, but I want to show you a couple of different watercolour ways that you could do this. And I mean you could change the sentiment up to a new baby, it looks quite sort of like the Winnie the Pooh heffalump. So I can see lots of different ways to use this set. So pop this to the side for now. Um, and this is where I was doing some practice earlier. So I'm going to show you, as I say, two different ways you can use this set um, with water colouring. So I'm going to be using the elephant again, and I'm going to be using my smoky slate ink pad for both of them. Now I'll do the first one. So I just want to ink up the set. I'm just going to take off some of this excess ink because it's quite a new juicy pad. Like so. That won't be too bad. I'm just going to stamp him over here. So it's just stamped normally. And then you'll see this is the, the technique I'm going to show you first, just sort of colouring you in. So it's just a lot softer than just the line art, which is beautiful. But it's just another uh, technique. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my aqua painter. And it's, it's reasonably moist. I don't know if you can see on the back of my hand. And I'm just going to scrub over all the inside shading just to soften it up just a little bit. Like so. And because these are water based pads, you can do this as long as you don't heat set it. And if you heat set it, that makes it a bit more permanent. Um, but if you don't heat set it, he's like that. So you can see there, he's already quite a lot softer um, than he was when we first stamped him out. But just to add that grey colour in, if you just squeeze your pad like that, when you open it up, you'll find in the lid you get a nice um, splodge of colour. And I'm going to add quite a lot of water to that. So it's a good squirt of my aqua painter. And that's really watery. You could do the same if you've got the, the only the stamping right markers, or you could do a different colour. And this will just create a really light wash. So he's not going to be dark grey. He's just going to have a really light grey wash all over him, just to colour him in a little bit. And this is on the watercolour paper, I should mention, this is on the Stampin' Up watercolour paper. And you can see he's just nicely, I'll move it a little bit closer to the camera, um, he's just a really light grey colour. And you could keep going, so if I picked up, let's move this more onto the sheet. If I actually picked up some of the colour with my aqua painter, I could give him some really dark, I could darken these here, and I could darken under here. We could put a little bit of dark on the end of the trunk, fill in his tail. We could just give him a bit more depth and dimension if you wanted to, or you can literally just do the wash over the top as well. I'm just going to... So you can see you can get a lot darker and the watercolour paper can take a huge amount of water You'll be really surprised um, how much water that can cope with um, If you used normal cardstock, you'd find it a bubble um, If you were to put that much water on it, I'm just going to wipe that up and clip it back in For our second technique. So just over here. I'm going to do the second one Which is the same technique that I've used on this elephant here. So you can see he is just line art. I haven't filled him in like I did with this one. Um, but it's a lot softer than when we stamped it originally. And to get that effect, you need to ink up your stamp. And then I'm gonna take my Mini Mister Water Spritzer. I can't remember exactly what they call them in the catalogue. I'm just gonna do it over to the sides. So I do it on the floor, but I'm doing just a couple of spritzes. So that was three, and you can see nice uh, water bubbles there, and then just stamp him down. 
and we're going to stamp him down like that. I'm just going to dry him off, just blow on him slightly. And you can see that you get that really, you've still got all the detail of the stamp, but it's just a bit softer, it looks like someone's painted it. So there's some different ways you can use uh, your ink pads to create the watercolour effect on the watercolour paper. Um, and then what we're going to do next is we're going to cut one of these out. So I think we'll take this shaded one for this, for this card. This is usually what I do when I um, when I stamp something out. I will cut round it like that, so I'll find one straight edge, and I'll just keep cutting round, and then I'll need to cut out my background piece. So out of my uh, pre-cuts, I've got some crumb cake. Now this piece that I've cut out is three and a half, so I want it to be a four inch strip, because I want a nice quarter of an inch all the way around. And then that's two and a quarter, so I want two and three quarters. That way. I'll put those to the side just for now. We'll mount these two up. So that's our elephant. Snail under there. There we go. Because it's a bit heavier the watercolour paper, so you do tend to need a little bit more uh, adhesive. Now we want to do our sentiments. So I'm going to use your always there for me, and I'm going to use that with my basic black archival pad. And I'm going to use a, the watercolour paper just so it all blends nicely together. And I'm going to pick a bit in the middle of my two elephants. And then I'm going to use the one and a half inch circle punch to punch that out. Um, sorry, the one and a quarter. I was thinking that looked a bit too big when I got it on there. So that's the one and a quarter, excuse me, uh, circle punch, which will give me your always there for me. And then I'm going to use the one and three quarters. Uh, punch, just make sure this fits in. Mm. Like that. And so we need to just pick that up. I stick it onto my uh, piece of crumb cake. And then what I do is I then center up where I want to punch out. And I just find that that's a lot easier than trying to punch out a circle in crumb cake and then centre up my small circle. Um, there's less room for error and they tend to, on the whole, end up a little bit more even. Okay, so those are our bits and pieces done. And what we're going to do now is the base card. So if I bring it back in. So I've got a piece of the Timeless Elegance uh, designer series paper which is actually retiring the spring summer catalogue so you've only got until 31st of May or while stocks last to get that one and I must say it's one that I've stockpiled um, it's got some absolutely gorgeous designs in it and you could actually use either side you could use the lace or I've gone for the softer look like so and what I've done is taken my sponge dauber and my basic black And I've just gone around the edges like so to darken it in. So you just go all the way around. And I'm just catching the edge very slightly. So I'm not running it along like that, I'm flicking it up and down.
And then you'll notice here on the corners, they're a bit more faded. So what I do to those is I'm just catching the corner until I've got enough. Then we want to layer it up onto our card base, which if I didn't mention is a very vanilla and it's half a piece of A4. And what I will do as always, if you look um, somewhere towards the bottom of the video, if you're in the app or on the website, uh, the YouTube website, it will give you a link back to the blog, a short link or a long link, depending on what's generated. And that will give you all your cutting instructions. There's a shopping list in there for any current products. Uh, which I will get updated when the new catalogue comes out. So there's some papers that are similar to this that we haven't been able to order yet, um, and you'll be able to um, order those. But if you want to order the Timeless Elegance paper while it's available, and there are some sets with elephants in and some line art that you could do this technique with, then uh, that's all on there too. And if you are placing an order through the Hedgehog Hollow um, blog, there's a link to the Stampin' Up! website to place the order with me. All your orders, as long as you um, don't click the box not to share your information, you'll receive a free gift from me. And also on the right-hand side of the blog, there is a monthly hostess code. If you enter that code when you shop with me, not only do you get your free gift, but you'll be entered into a draw for a £25 uh, shopping spree with Stampin' Up! through me so there's lots of advantages there so I hope you'll check out the blog as well and you can also follow us on Facebook so while I've mounted all of that up I'm now going to use this gorgeous new uh, flirty flamingo ruched ribbon which is coming out June 1st and was part of our demonstrator pre-order and I'm going to make a bow out of it so making longer tails so I make two loops and then I knot them together a nice bow, let's even it up slightly on the left and I'm going to use my ribbon snips, now these are a pair of ginger scissors that I got in Joann's with a coupon a couple of years ago and they just cut through ribbon like butter and I keep them only for ribbon, no one would dare use them for anything else, I think uh, when my husband gets scissors out he certainly never gets these ones out and I'm going to use a glue dot to fix it onto my card I'm just going to stick it on the edge there. So there we go. So we now have two always there for me cards. Always a lovely one to have in the cupboard. But as I say, you could switch it up for a baby. You could have it for a thank you. All sorts of different occasions. Um, and I, I really do love this stamp. So I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of it. So thanks for joining us today. If you've got any questions, leave a comment um, below the video. Or you can contact me through the blog. And don't forget to use hashtag Hedgehog Hollow for all of your creations. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.